Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about Dark Ages from Marvel Comics. Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. As always, I'm your host, Brent Casino. Today we're talking about Dark Ages from Marvel Comics. This is written by Tom Taylor and drawn by Iban Coelho. And it's pretty good. Um, Tom Taylor, if you don't know, has written Injustice, which I thought those video game comics were phenomenal. I remember reading them uh, weekly, you know, on, on Comixology, getting the little, like, super widescreen version of it. I even went so far as to collect all of them in my eye section right here um, in trade paperback. So we'll be reading those at some point in the future because I haven't read those copies yet. But I've read, I've read that re that first full five years of Injustice, those um, weekly digital comics on my iPad at least two or three times. And I think some parts of it are really, really strong, especially those first two years. Um, so anyway, Tom Taylor went over to Marvel for a little bit, did a couple of things. He wrote The Wolverine with uh, Laura for a while there. And then he did this miniseries, Dark Ages, which was six issues. And it's kind of his not his injustice because it didn't last as long, but it's kind of him doing the same thing that he did for Marvel that he was doing for DC, as in, you know, create an experience where you can have a, a post-apocalyptic world and tell some cool stories with Marvel characters. That's kind of what Dark Ages is. Um, this was like kicked off with a free comic book day, eight pager or something like that a couple of years ago. And that's what's in here um, as well. Iban Coelho is the artist and he's, He's interesting. I, I, I like his stuff. Um, he's got the kind of anime fluidity that a lot of new artists these days have or that you're seeing on, on Marvel Comics especially. Um, he does also remind me of Adrian Gutierrez on Blue, Blue Beetle right now um, and also of Ig Guada who is doing the New 52 Blue Beetle stuff. Also Blue Beetle artist. But um, he's got his own style. Uh, it's a little bit like Tyler Kirkham, but he's got these exaggerated lines, uh, exaggerated stances like Quicks over here that just, you know, scream anime, I guess you would say. So that's what I'm saying. Like he's got that anime fluidity to him. Um, so I really do like his art. It's, it's easy to follow. It's easy to read. Every character has their own look. And that's really what you want out of a comic artist. Like, honestly, I can't say that Iban Coelho is one of these guys that has the same look for every character. It, because every character looks a little bit different. So his facial features and stuff are really, really spot on. Um, another place where he's strong is, is action. There's, it being a Tom Taylor book, there's impact moments where people are getting hurt, people are getting killed, maimed, all that types of stuff. And every panel where you, there's a surprise really hits home. So he's doing a great job here. Um, so what is Dark Ages? What is it about? Well, it's a post-apocalyptic future for the Marvel Universe after everything goes dark, hence the cover. Well, not really this cover, but issue number one's cover was a blackout cover. Let's see if we can find it in the first couple pages here. For some reason, they didn't make that the cover of the actual trade. They made the alternate cover, but this is actually number one. Like This is what the cover of the trade should be. This one right here with everything, everybody kind of blacked out, but for whatever reason, you know, I guess for sales, right? They made it so you could see everybody. But um, basically there's a giant EMP that blacks out the entire world for years and years and years and the Marvel Universe has to find a way to survive and you have people like Apocalypse trying to take advantage of people while meanwhile Doctor Doom is teaming up with the Black Panther and Spider-Man and uh, also Bloodstone in Wakanda to try and stop him from basically destroying the Earth. So the first four issues in here I think were really, really strong. You're, Coming from Peter's point of view, just as a narrator, even though he's using it as like a, they're kind of using Peter's POV as a third person narrator, not first person. He's telling you events that happened in other places where he wasn't because he's kind of, maybe he's the record keeper of some sort. He's just telling the story of how the world got the way it was. Um, so you're, you're bopping around scenes with Peter's little red narration boxes. Uh, it's pretty cool. But once you get to issue five is kind of where I feel like things fell apart. Um, basically, the, the characters are in New York, they're in Wakanda, and they have to journey to Europe to fight Apocalypse, who's our main bad guy here in this series, because he's the guy that's trying to destroy everything. 
Once they get to issue number five, when they reach Europe, um, there's some significant deaths. Everything just kind of rushes to a climax. Um, issue number five deals with Miles Morales, and then issue number six really kind of just folds in this climax really fast. Um, and, and it's not even a double-sized issue, and I think that's kind of where it felt a little hollow for me, is that the story doesn't take its time to, to finish. There's a lot of more world building in the first four issues than there is of plot or, uh, you know, there's still character that's built, but the villain's reason for what they're doing isn't really established. And I think that's what falls apart for me at the end of this volume is where uh, in issue number six, you have the villains telling you what their plan is. And meanwhile, at the same time, their plans being uh, disintegrated, you know, right before your eyes in, in 20 pages or less. So... It felt like kind of a rushed ending, but all in all, I, I feel like it's a it's a decent read. You know, if you find this at your local library or a friend lets you borrow it, I think it's decent. It's not something that I'm going to say like this is Tom Taylor's best work. I feel like his Wolverine stuff with Laura was a lot stronger than this, but um, you know, this was this was pretty good. And I, I feel like this didn't hit as hard as Marvel wanted it to. You know, there's no follow-on series. He went back to DC. Um, you know, it's not a not something that's going to go on and on forever. Maybe it was them testing the waters with this universe. Like, what can we do with this? That kind of thing. And it didn't really hit hard, I think, because, you know, people just aren't interested in that kind of tale from Marvel. Like, they're, Marvel doesn't have an Elseworlds line, per se. Yeah, they have the Exiles. They have alternate universes. They have the Ultimate Universe. But really, there's no uh, alternate tales within Marvel that people are like, I want to see more of this one, more of this one, whereas... You know, DC has years and years and years of alternate Earths going all the way back to the 70s with Earth 2, right, that people are interested in. So Marvel just doesn't have that history, so maybe didn't catch on that way. Uh, and then at the end of the day, with issue number six, it was just kind of like, well, there's your ending. You know, there's no, there's nothing more to, to run with here. Um, so I don't know. All in all, I'd, I'd probably, you know, I'd recommend this if you're if you're going to rent it kind of say or, or read it or borrow it from a library that's that's how I would read it I wouldn't go out and seek it out and make it a permanent addition to your collection of great all-time comic books it's it's okay it's pretty good but it's mostly okay so that's my thoughts on dark ages from marvel comics let me know what you guys thought of this book down below we'll see you guys next time in the funny pages